I think, you know what, this time around, I figured out the care requirements. It'll be fine. Nope. Hello, my fellows. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by for today's video. And if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I love plants. If you're a returning viewer to my channel and are familiar with my content, you know that most of my videos surround care tips and plant collections and things like that, and I haven't really touched on the realities of plant parenthood. So in this video today, I wanted to share with you some of the not so glamorous side of indoor gardening and talk about some of the plants that have killed more than once. Oopsie! Everyone's killed plants, okay? It's completely normal. It may not be ideal, but it happens to the best of us. And if you haven't killed a plant, then definitely leave a comment down below and share your secret. If you're thinking, I haven't killed a plant because I don't own any, then get out of here. What are you doing watching my videos? I'm just kidding. Everyone's welcomed here. We don't discriminate. As I was saying, in this video, I'm going to talk about the plants that I've killed multiple times. So if you're interested to hear about my experiences with plants that I've killed in the past and also what I've learned from them, then definitely keep on watching. Before we get started, you might have noticed that there are ads now on my videos and I just wanted to say a great big thank you to all of you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it and we wouldn't have gotten this far without your support. So thank you so much. I know that they can be pretty annoying sometimes, but some of these ads are actually pretty good. So I hope you don't mind. And for those of you who are new, I post videos every week. So make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification bell if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on my future uploads. Enough rambling, let's begin. Number one is this guy right here, and that's the maiden hair fern. Most of you will already know this, but maiden hair ferns are notorious for being divas. It's very easy to accidentally kill these guys because if you miss a watering or two, they will crisp up like there's no tomorrow. However, the saving grace is that they are quite easy to revive. I've brought this plant back from the brink of death too many times to count and each time it doesn't fail to come back. So even though these guys are a little bit finicky, they do rise from the ashes and they come back to life. If you watched my best and worst plants of 2020, you would have seen that this guy was basically bare. It didn't have any foliage on it at all whatsoever. But fast forward a couple of months, it's regrown and bushed out again. One thing that I've learned from my experience growing these guys and killing them multiple times is that one, they do prefer to have wet feet. So I leave mine in a reservoir of water and never let it dry out. I find that that's really helped to keep them lush and avoid from having any crispy edges. Another tip that I've discovered to help with the growth of these guys is to give them a little bit of cooled black tea once a week or once a fortnight to help fertilize these guys. But honestly, if you can't be bothered with the fussy plants, then I'd say just stay away from this plant altogether. Next plant is this guy, and you might be wondering what this is. Well, I'll show you a picture of what this looked like before. This is a Begonia pizzazz, or the Begonia Benitochiba, I believe is what it's called. I recently did a Begonia collection video, and I didn't include this one in there because it's pretty much dead. And I also mentioned in that video that I used to be a Begonia killer. A moment of silence for all the Begonias that I've killed in the past. I didn't know how finicky begonias were when I first started getting into houseplants and I learned it the hard way. They're easily overwatered and then they don't like being underwatered either. So it's a fine line with these begonias, especially with begonia rexes because of their stems. So if you ain't got time for that, then resist the beautiful foliage, do yourself a favor and step away from the begonia. But the thing is, I'm such a sucker for their foliage that I just can't give up. Like I need to figure out a way to grow these guys and I think I finally did. I hope you're enjoying this video so far guys. If you are, then please do me a favor and like this video. It really helps out my channel. And while you're at it, leave me a comment down below to let me know if you've also struggled with these plants. And let's get back into it. Similar to the begonias, I also struggle with these 
Peperomia caparatus. This is another plant that I've killed multiples of. I used to have two beautiful Peperomia caparata. I believe one was a red Luna and the other is a silver ripple. And yep, they didn't make it. They're gone now. And this one is a variegated Peperomia caparata that is also not doing too good. I do okay with the other Peperomias like the Peperomia argyria, Peperomia hope, Peperomia tetragona and things like that. With these guys, I just struggle so hard. I find that it comes down to watering as well. It doesn't like to dry out, but then it doesn't like being overwatered. So again, it is a fine line. I actually think that the care requirements for this and the Begonia Rex is very similar when it comes to watering. A good way to tell if they need water is by feeling how perky they are. So with the Begonia Rex and the Peperomia caparata, if they are dehydrated, they actually get quite limp. It doesn't have much of a recoil and it's kind of drooping downwards. Once you give it a little bit of water, it will perk back up a little bit and have a little bit more structure to them. I know that this is not a care tips video, but I just can't help myself. Like I need to tell you the solution. Definitely bottom water them because the leaves and foliage don't like getting wet. The moment they get wet, they they rot and yeah, it'll just not be good for the plant at all. And secondly, if you top water it, I find that the soil eventually compacts around the roots and it's just a matter of time before the Peperomia caparata dies. That's happened to my silver ripple which I've had for close to two years before it just went. So don't make the same mistakes I did and definitely bottom water your Peperomias. Next plant that I've killed multiple times is the String of Pearls. As I mentioned in my String of Pearls care tips video, I have killed so many of these guys in the past. So this is not going to be a surprise to those of you who've already watched that video. But yes, like I said, with String of Pearls, they get overwatered really easily. And the moment they do, they just get brown and mushy and it's very difficult to come back from that. If you are interested in care tips, definitely watch that video if you haven't already. I over fertilized <laughs> it and it's not doing so well at the moment. If you watch that String of Pearls care tips video, you'll notice that it's not as full and lush on the top as it was before. And there are also quite a number of crispy brown beads on there. Anyways, I'm really hoping that this will bounce back and I've also got some propagations going, so we'll see how that goes. Last plant on this list is not going to be a surprise to those of you who have known me for a little while on Instagram, and that is my baby's tears. I give up with this plant literally every time I purchase this plant, bring it home, and I think, you know what, this time around, I figured out the care requirements. It'll be fine. Nope. This is what happens every single time. I just can't even count the number of times I have tried to care for it. It just crisps up and I just don't know. I give up on this plant. Don't ever talk to me about baby's tears. I don't want to hear it. It's dead to me, literally. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my other videos like these ones here, so click to check them out. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay mellow my fellows.